Asperger's and bullying. There are a lot of things about Asperger's and bullying that I think are important to address. For starters, it's very common for people with Asperger's to have a rough upbringing and um, they try to figure themselves out. Okay, I know that for me, over time, I was able to really learn why I was the way I was, why my brain was the way that it was, and I felt like in many ways growing up I had to have sort of a relationship with my brain. Like I had to figure out why I thought the way I thought, why I did the things I did, why I was so obsessive about you know, certain hobbies but not other hobbies, and the hobbies I had sort of made me a loner, like video games and swimming by myself. And that's the way that it was for a long time until I was older and I had new interests. And I, you know, it's very common for people with AS to be picked on growing up and to be bullied and to be, to be seen in a different way. I think that it's really, it's important to note that Asperger's people don't mean to be selfish or self-centered, but it's very, very hard for them to have empathy with certain things. It's hard for them to put themselves in somebody else's shoes, so to speak. I know that for me, I couldn't really see what certain things I did looked like. I know that like when I got kicked out of my private school or had to leave because of my story and I went to that, that public school, I would do weird things that I didn't realize was weird. Like, like there'd be bleachers with a bunch of people that were sitting on the bleachers and I'd be standing far away at the fence and just wanting to hang out by myself. And there was a lot of times in my life like that where I was hurting for some reason. In that case, I was just kind of jolted into a new school because of my horror story. And I had to be comfortable in a new situation and changes are hard for Asperger's people. So naturally I was hurting and I wanted to be a loner. And I realize now more about people that are introverted, people that want to be loners. They, people gather strength within sometimes, but people would see that as, as weakness, as, you know, I, I didn't like people, I didn't want friends, I was a weirdo. Uh, no, it wasn't any of those things. The, the truth is, especially in 10th grade, there were a lot of times where I had plenty of people I could have had lunch with or talked with or socialized with, but I chose not to because I had to spend by, time by myself. I had to figure out myself and my thoughts, and I did a lot of journaling. and. I, this is my 10th grade rough coming out and I had a lot of anger, I had a lot of things I had to sort through. So I spent a lot of time by myself journaling. And there's things like that, things that bullies would automatically see, whoa, that's weird, I'm going to pick on that person. But also imagine, you know, my younger years where I'm cracking my knuckles and I'm looking at the ground and I, I have this really unconfident body language and I just seem really unsure of myself and people with Asperger's I think are also really uncomfortable in their own skin and I know I was and that's something as I got older I got more and more comfortable with myself and in the same way I was also more feminine when I was younger people could tell I was gay more easily and as I've gotten older that's become less and less so where it's become where I just I have to tell people or they suspect but it's, it's sort of hard to gap that bridge because for me it's not there's never really a good time to be like oh yeah I like men or something it doesn't really come up in conversation for me but so I dance with people for a while. But anyway, um, I think it's really mistakes. I made a lot of social mistakes. I made a lot of social mistakes. And that's part of Asperger's too. And there's a quote of, there's no, that's the beauty of being young. There are no mistakes, only research. It's a line from Nip Tuck. And I think that's it's true with anyone, but it's especially true with people with Asperger's. I know that for me, I had to make a lot of social errors to kind of learn from each one and, and be guided from that and see why something's weird to that person. But for me, it seemed like a normal thing, but I just made this person uncomfortable or I might've made this group of people uncomfortable. There's a lot of mistakes I kind of had to learn from, but you learn from each one. It's also normal for people with Asperger's to be numb to social stuff altogether because they I know for me it's like I made so many mistakes and every time I try to say something it seemed maybe not quite that often but whatever I I would make mistakes I'd feel embarrassed I'd feel like I shouldn't have said that and and all these things sort of lead to my conclusion of you really, it's so important, maybe for any kid, but I think especially for an Asperger's kid, you have to take a martial arts. You have to take some kind of martial arts. And, you know, there's so many different ones. There's so many pros and cons to each one. Rather than wasting time, like, sorting through all of them, I think that it's important to get started with one right away 
and then then research some other ones and see if maybe there's a better fit. But there's a lot of reasons that this is important. For one, for me, I was interested in video games and swimming. I never got to really hang out with people during my interests, and that's something I wish I could have done different. I wish I had more confidence. I wish I had more coordination. With more confidence and more coordination, I definitely would have been to sports growing up, but for me, I didn't feel like that was possible because I wasn't coordinated. I would have made my team mad at me. It would have given bullies and stuff an extra reason to pick on me. Some of the bullies even would have been on the team with me. Didn't want to spend more time with them. On my private school, it was such a small school anyway, and I didn't want to spend more time around those people. But if I could do it again, I really, really wish I could have been in martial arts my whole life. I think my whole upbringing could have been a lot better because of that for a lot of reasons. It's not just the fighting ability. I thought it was just the fighting ability when I was little, I was wrong. It's not just the fighting ability. For starters, there's coordination, there's time around people, there's confidence building, there's, and then, and then there's fighting ability. But with all those things, especially confidence, you may not be picked on by bullies in the first place. You'll have the body language to other people that you're not not confident like me, that how I was, and cracking my knuckles, and looking at the ground, and having terrible posture, and and just so uncomfortable with myself and bullies feed off of body language. I didn't realize that at the time. I couldn't put myself in someone else's shoes to see that. I couldn't see what I looked like to someone else. And if I was a bully, I totally would have picked on me. I definitely would have picked on me. I would have been a really easy target and I was targeted a lot. But my story is that I actually was in a karate class when I was real little, about nine, I think. And I loved it. I thought it was great. I learned the snap kicks. I, I thought my, my instructor was so cool. There was a basic class and there was an advanced class. My brother, older brother, went to the advanced class and I ended up following him the following time. And we were actually doing some fighting to try to learn to defend ourselves. My mom said, no, I'm not going to let him do that. And guess what? I was pulled. No option to go to basic class, no option for maybe when you're older. I was pulled against my will. No more karate. I, I never bought up again until a few years later when my mom thought she was being funny and she said, she's talking about my peewee football when I was little and she said, you quit football, you quit karate. I like karate. You pulled me out of karate because we had to fight each other. And she just was stunned and hurt and that was the only time it was ever mentioned and in none of that did she ever say, oh, you could join it now or whatever. I never bought it up again. For me, it wasn't an option. I just never really thought about it again because I was pulled. It's something that I regret for myself. But, And I just wish that all Asperger's people would just, you know, learn from some of that and just get involved in something. Don't let yourself get picked on growing up like I was. But anyway, what else? I also know that I've been a little bit of a cause for bullying myself because I it's common for people with Asperger's to be temperamental. They can, can be a little short-tempered about some things and I've heard and I've read that Asperger's people, if you touch them, they might get mad or they might want to hit you or they, they just, they just kind of jolt. And I know for me, that's so not true. I'm an extremely affectionate person. Uh, I love hugs and stuff. So for me, that that's kind of the opposite. But I know for other Asperger's people, I think that they're kind of touch sensitive and there's, there's some things they could be sort of short tempered about. And I know for me, I, I raised my voice at times and wasn't even realizing it, or I might have been saying things in a way that was rude and there, there was a nicer way to say that, or I didn't realize that that's like a sensitive topic and I said it in kind of a blunt way. And my wish for other people around Asperger's people, you've got to tell them when they're being rude. I know for myself, I needed people just to say, you're being rude about this, please say it in this nicer way. We need people to say, dude, you're talking to me really loud right now. Believe me, I would have listened to it. I wanted people to tell me when I was because sometimes I was rude and I didn't know it, especially at, you know, angry points in my life and I, I didn't always know if I was being cold and that was frustrating for me because for me I thought I was sounding normal and that's sort of the other end is that Asperger's people might need people to work with them a little bit on that. I know I did. Because that might be everything. Yeah, I think that's everything. I hope that was helpful. And I also want some feedback from people about um, the ways they've been bullied with Asperger's, things that they've learned about Asperger's, things about standing up for the bullies. 
I've heard a couple bits of advice that saying thank you to people that are verbally harassing you is very helpful, which makes sense as that would be great in a in a reverse psychology way, while well, if you say something mean back, then they'll just want to say something mean back to you, and by saying thank you, then they just might look at you like you're weird. It kind of takes the fun out of what they're doing. I wish I had done that. And I've heard <laughs> from the amazing atheist that if you sneak up behind them with your heaviest textbook and whack them in the back of the head with it, that they understand violence, and that's something that would scare them, and that's something they would remember. And I'm not sure if I want to encourage that, but somehow I feel like that might work too. Something I also, maybe, maybe I wish I tried that. There's some people that might, might need that, but I don't know. I'd be cautious about that one. I could get you in a lot of trouble. <laughs> Saying thank you and messing with them is probably a better response. Or sometimes even joking back is good too. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. I want feedback from Asperger's people and neurotypical people that are, in other words, for not Asperger's people, just stuff you've done in bullying situations, stuff you've learned from your experience and any other feedback is great too. Thank you. See ya.